Good morning. It got warm in here. Did you all feel that heat? Oh, you didn't? <laughs> I guess it was just me and the Lord then. <laughs> what a beautiful song. Thank you, choir and uh, David, ministry and song for leading us into uh, worship expressing our, our love for the Lord. And it is certainly in, in that context that we, we want to look at the, uh, continue to look at this uh, book of Nehemiah. And we're, we're going to be looking at the second chapter. And uh, if you would turn there and I'm going to read, uh, start at verse 17. Then I said to them, and this is Nehemiah, uh, indicating that he's speaking to the people in Jerusalem. Then I said to them, you see the bad situation we are in, that Jerusalem is desolate and its gates burned by fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them how the hand of my God had been favorable to me and also about the king's words, which he had spoken to me. Then they said, let us arise and build. So they put their hands to the good work. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite Official and Geshem the Arab heard it, they mocked us and despised us and said, What is this thing you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven will give us success. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. But you have no portion, right or memorial, in Jerusalem. And God, we do thank you for your word. Bless it this morning. Uh, multiply the, our understanding and open the eyes of our heart, Lord God, that we would come to truly understand uh, that which you have provided for us uh, in that you loved us, you gave your son for us, and he is even now sitting at your right hand, the place of authority over all things. And we thank you, Lord God, for this, and we pray all of this in his name. As we consider these words this morning, and, and particularly the song that we just heard, um, there was another song I was hoping that we, um, we might have time to hear this morning, but we didn't. And it's a song um, sung by Martha Manuzzi and, and her uh, group, choir. Um, and it's called, My God is a Big God. Have any of you heard that song? Powerful song. Some of the words are, He's the rock, the mighty one. By his power, we've overcome. The battle is already won. And, and, and these this next few verses are so powerful. So I'm marching into a battle. He's already won. There's no weapon that can prosper, and no kingdom can stand, for he's given us the victory by the power of his hand. Beautiful word. So one, one day, before we finish Nehemiah, we're going to play that. We actually have a, a YouTube video, and, and it's beautiful. It's, it's, the words are um, 
really apropos for Nehemiah and where he is in his venture to lead Israel to rebuild the walls. Um, he says here in, in verse 17, uh, Then I said to them, You see the bad situation we are in, that Jerusalem is desolate and its gates burned by fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. So if you will allow me some dramatic, um, and I, I didn't ask our drama director and producer over there to help me, of course I need it, but if you will allow me, I imagine that Nehemiah went in, maybe into a room like this and said to the people, you see the bad situation we're in. So, let's see if we can rebuild these walls and, and try to, you know, get this reproach off of us. Well, I don't think so. I don't think he went in the room like that. I think Nehemiah went in the room and said, y'all, look, let's go. I have been praying. God's hand has been upon me and we can do this. Let's go. That's what I believe happened. Now, it doesn't, you don't see that in the word, but if you kind of consider the context of what Nehemiah has been going through for a number of months and what Israel has been going through for 70 years. So Nehemiah will eventually lead a, a third return to Israel. There were two others. The first one was Zerubbabel, and, and he led a group back to rebuild the temple. And so the second was Ezra. Ezra led another group back, and, and he rebuilt, he was a priest, he was a preacher. And so he was preaching the word to rebuild the people. And so while all of this is going on, the walls in Jerusalem are still down. And so I can imagine, you know, folks are walking, what are we going to do about the walls? The king won't let us build the walls. The walls are down, and what are we going to do? People are going to attack us. So I can imagine some folks probably said, well, I'll lead. And this group over here probably said, he don't know what he's doing. And then somebody else said, well, I have an idea. And this group over there said, he's as bad as the first guy. I can imagine that Israel was probably like us, struggling to find a leader that would take them forward to build the wall of Jerusalem. And here they found one. They didn't even know this man. He came, he was the cup bearer to the king. And so he comes before them and says, let's do this. Now, it wasn't just that he told them, we can do this. Look at verse 18. And I told them how the hand of my God had been favorable to me. So, so what does that sound like? That sounds like a testimony. I told them how the hand of my God had been favorable to me and also about the king's words which he had spoken to me. Then they said, let us arise and build. So they put their hands to the good work. You know, some people... don't like to testify. When, you know, when the pastor 
says, you know, now it's time for testimonies. And, and I think we did this um, New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve. And you would have thought that everybody would have jumped up and just been burning to give a testimony. Testimonies are critical to encouraging and helping to build the body of Christ. And that's what Nehemiah is doing here. He is testifying about the goodness of the Lord and what the Lord has done. He says, the hand of my God has been favorable upon me. This word favor, you know, I think we said last week, people sometimes use it out of context. And, and you've often heard someone say, you know, I'm blessed and highly favored. And, and so how do, you, how do you get this favor? You know, how, does, how are you able to legitimately say that I am highly favored? Well, I think Nehemiah and Ezra give us a great example uh, of this. They, they say that God's hand was upon them. And, and if you turn with me to Ezra, chapter 7. Look with me, let's start at verse 6, just to get some context. The verses 1 through 5 sort of tell you who Ezra is, his family, give you some of his, um, you know, his family background. Uh, but in verse 6 it says, This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a scribe skilled in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all he requested, because the hand of the Lord, his God, was upon him. And some of the sons of Israel and some of the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants went up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. For on the first of the first month, he began to go up from Babylon. And on the first of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem because the good hand of his God was upon him. For, is, for Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to practice it and to teach his statutes and ordinances in Israel. One of the things that we need to understand, excuse me, is, is this issue about the hand of God. The hand of God. Ha, have you ever seen God's hand? Th that's a question. It's not rhetorical. It's a question. Have you ever seen God's hand? Not literally. Because he doesn't have a hand, literally. He, he is spirit. Amen? We worship him in spirit. And so, why do we refer to him as if he has a hand throughout the Old Testament? It says, God's hand was upon me. We, it, it's called a personification or um, another longer word that takes the word for human in Greek and the word for shape and, and puts it together and and gives us the meaning that we take something or someone like God who doesn't have shape and form and we assign shape and form to him. The eyes of the Lord. All right? His hand is upon me. Now, what we need to understand is that when we do things, we do things with our hands. 
And so when we think of God, we, we understand him as accomplishing things with his hand so that we, it gives us an ability to understand how he's moving. And so when you say, when I ask the question, have you ever seen God's hand? On one hand, you say no, because you literally, you can't see his hand. But on the other, you should, because you ought to see him moving in your life. And we ascribe to that the hand of God. When it says in, uh, when Paul says that, um, that, that Christ is now sitting at the right hand of God. So what does that mean? Well, that means that on the right hand, in, it's symbolic of authority. So if, if Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, that means he's sitting in, in the place of authority. And God has given him authority over all things in heaven and on earth. So Nehemiah here ascribes and Ezra ascribed to God, his hand was upon me, meaning they could see God working in their lives. And Nehemiah testified of it. Now, why? Why are they able to say God's hand was favorable upon me? I think it's in in verse 10. Look at verse 10 with me. For Ezra had set his heart, and in the King James, it probably says, prepared to seek. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to practice it and to teach his statutes and ordinances in Israel. The, the word therefore, the preposition there is a, is a causal word, meaning there's a cause. It, it, it fo- something follows what happens after it. See, when, when Ezra said, I'm going to read the word of God, what happened after that is God blessed him. That's what the word is saying here. See, you, don't, you can't just wake up in the morning and walk past your devotional room and not spend time with God and then walk around and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. That's contrary to what I think Nehemiah and Ezra are telling us, is that the way you are blessed and highly favored is that you spend time with he who is able to bless and highly favor you. You, you, you can't spend time, as, as wonderful as he is, Pastor David. I've known him all my life. But he is not going to be the one that's going to bless me and make me highly favored. Now, he might help me in instruction and teaching and guiding, but it is going to be God who blesses me and highly favors me because I spend time with him. You see, I am not so worthy that I would think that I could just get up and what, God, I'm here, bless me now today. No, no, I don't care who you are. God's word is true. Ezra committed to serving the Lord to reading the word. The word there prepared in the King James is the same word as set in in the New American Standard or or maybe the NIV. And and it has the sense of established, to be firm. So Nehemiah didn't, at the beginning of 2013, Ezra and Nehemiah didn't say, well, I'm, I'm going to have a New Year's resolution to read the Word of God. And it's the sixth day, and they haven't picked up their Bible yet. No. They were firmly prepared, established. It's the same word in Psalms 37, 23, I think it is, where 
where the psalmist says, the steps of, the, of a man, of a righteous man, are ordered by the Lord. That means God has established the steps. See, when you step out on God, you can step firmly. You don't have to be wavering. Amen? You can step strong. That's why, you know, when I listen to that song, uh, Martha Manuzzi is singing. She's saying, we are marching into a battle that he's already won. Imagine that. Imagine Joshua. Joshua, go tear down the walls of Jericho. But Lord, we don't have any. Joshua, just go. It's already done. And now he's walking around, he and these people are walking around the wall seven times, acting to, to, to other people, it, it seems stupid, doesn't it? Think about a problem you got. And you start walking around this problem seven times. Somebody's going to think you're crazy. They're gonna, if you follow God, people will think that you are crazy because God is going to ask you to do something only that he could ask you to do, and it's going to be crazy. God, you, no, there's no way you want me to do that. Are you serious? Put up with that fool? No. For 41 years? Oh, thank God. <laughs> only God would ask you to do impossible things. So what we're going to look at here, and we don't have time today, but just, just an appetizer, there, there are three things that come out of spending time with God and, and, and God's hand being upon you. Provision, he will provide. Power, you will have power. Protection you will have protection. God, we thank you so much. Even in this time, Lord, that you have given us, you have um, opened up your word and, and, and just illuminated for us, Lord, just a little bit about who you are. God, this is the year 2013. And we covenant, Lord, we, we set our hearts, we we, pre we are prepared, God, to spend time with you so that even in our weakest times, we are strong. And it is not our strength, Lord, but it is your strength. And God, so we thank you this morning for this opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone. Maybe there's someone sitting among us today under the sound of my voice who doesn't know Jesus Christ. Is there someone out there today who is just wondering, what can I do? What can I do to be saved? What can I do to have some help in, in solving some of these problems? And I'm telling you, it's Jesus Christ. You can't do it without him. Or maybe someone here today visiting and looking for a church home and would join Manna this morning. Is there one? And so, Father, we do thank you so much. Thank you, God, for your kindness and your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you will indeed be with us. We pray for our Sunday school, God. We thank you for um, Brother Tony and his leadership and uh, the exciting um, times that we're having in Sunday school. And so we pray also for Pastor David as he prepares to come forth at 11 uh, to preach your word. And, and we just pray, God, that you will be pleased with all that we do today to worship you. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. And we recognize, Father, uh, that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or even think. 
It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Manna. God bless you. And walk with the king today.